You know, when he when he speaks about uh, about Natalie Holloway might be uh, part of the sex uh, slave trade now, and then this uh, uh, potentially altered tape, it strikes right at his credibility. So he's got to be very careful how he plays this. And you know, Frazier, they released the statement that we just read saying that, look, they basically stand by everything they did. Is there something more they should do just to reassure the folks? Yeah, no, here, what, what they have to do is this. There are only three choices. One, the tape is truthful. Two, the private eye altered it or three, somebody on Dr. Phil's staff altered it. If I'm advising Dr. Phil, I say, look, it's your credibility, it's your reputation. You find out what happened, you get to the bottom of it, you shake everybody up, and you announce it next week on the air, or else you run the risk of uh, becoming the uh, medical equivalent of Geraldo. You don't want that to happen. You know, and again, the tape analyst that we had on last night, I want to show another clip from what he had to say. He felt that it was sort of sensationalized, that there were some changes. Um, I don't think we have it, but I just want to read. He basically says that Dr. Phil's show is filled with music and hype. Uh, at playback, it sounded a bit different. Steve Cohen, if you're still with us in Aruba, is there something that the Aruban government's going to do just to clear this up? Because Dr. Well, Phil standing by a story very well, maybe his explanation is the right one. Well, as soon as Chief Dom Peck received the report, uh, which said that one tape was manipulated, he immediately called the FBI and offered the tapes to their forensic experts. So that is, that is happening as we speak. Will we get the FBI's response, yes. Stephen? When, when will we get that? I, that I, I'm not in control of their timetable, but I expect it'll be quick because we, again, all we're looking for are any bits of information that can help us solve this puzzle of a disappearance. And if this, in fact, is a, a valid bit of information where Calpo says that he committed rape, as did the others, well, that's very important in moving the investigation forward. But at this point, there's so much question about these tapes that our investigators really can't move forward with it. No, and it doesn't sound like anybody R can Rita? at this point. Yeah, go ahead, real R quick. Rita, what would be the possible reason for the Dr. Phil show to mess with the tape? Why would they do that? How would they benefit? Well, I, I, have an, I have an answer for that, Rita, if I might. Yeah, go ahead really fast. All right, my answer, my answer is that he, ha that he had a scenario that, that ended the show that he asked for a boycott of Aruba and that he needed all his pieces in that show to fall together so that they would conclude that Aruba should be boycotted. Let me real quick get a Harold in because, Harold, is it so. possible that, uh, that Aruba just doesn't want to admit that maybe it is on the tape? Let's play devil's advocate. Well, I think that's uh, pretty safe so far from uh, at least uh, my standpoint as an investigator and a former agent, uh, I haven't been too impressed with what they've done in Aruba to date. Uh, so I think uh, I stand by and say, let's get the full transcript, lay them down side by side, and I think the chips will fall where they may. Exactly. The facts Agreed. are going to speak for themselves. Agreed. Everybody, thank you. And, of course, the debate about Dr. Phil's investigation into Natalie Holloway's disappearance doesn't end with the tapes that we're talking about. Just a few weeks ago, Dr. Phil dropped this bombshell on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. We have reasonable belief and some credible evidence that Natalie Holloway is alive. Is alive? Is alive. Um, we, it, can't, I, we cannot prove that at this point. Um, and we don't know where she is, but you know there is a huge uh, sex slave underground uh, in some of those countries down there. Young women have disappeared uh, from that part of the world um, before, um, and we have we we have reasonable cause to believe that she may well be alive. And live and direct tonight from Atlanta is private investigator T.J. Ward. T.J., what do you make of those statements from Dr. Phil? Hi, Rita. Um, I believe that it's, it's way out of fetched. I spent a lot of time in Aruba, and there's pieces of the puzzle that, that I know about, and I hardly believe that she's in a sex slave camp. But is it possible you just should look at all options, T.J.? I mean, you, you don't want to exclude anything, right? Well, we don't want to exclude anything, but when this came up at the first part of the investigation back in the first part of June, the FBI has done a lot of work down in South America to um, follow up with these, these type of allegations. All right, TJ, stick around if you could, because when we come back, why is Deepak Kalpo out of prison in the first place when the chief of police said he's guilty? Remember on the show, guilty as hell. That's coming up, and that's not all. Still ahead, a 20-year-old shooter goes berserk inside a shopping mall. And for the first time, pure and simple. To get a free trial of prescription. Who decides what the next big thing in TV is? Who judges which innovations bring TV to the next level? 
question in the Natalie Holloway case is, could this controversial tape of one of the prime suspects possibly confessing put him and the other suspects back behind bars? Joining me again on the phone tonight from Aruba is special advisor to the Aruban government, Steve Cohen, and let's also bring back in private investigator T.J. Ward. Steve, I want to go to you, but first I want to show, this is a comment that Deputy Chief Dombek, who's the acting police chief down there in Aruba, as you know, uh, made on our show, basically talking about the tapes. This is prior to the release, and let's listen to what he had to say. Once uh, these tapes uh, have proven to be authentic, which is very important for our uh, the court case, we uh, definitely will move ahead. And I, I assure you that this will be uh, a complete turnaround of the case. And uh, as I said earlier in other interviews, if these guys are guilty, I want them behind bars. And before I get to that, I also want to play the subsequent conversation that I had with Chief Dombig not too long after that. I believe the conversation was November 2nd, where he took that guilty line just one step further. I still believe that these boys uh, have been lying. They're still lying. And uh, everybody knows that by now. Chief, you, you said to me even before this interview that you believe the boys are guilty as hell. Do you believe they're involved in her disappearance? Yes. Steve Cohen, there was a pretty strong yes from the deputy chief of police, the acting police chief there. What's going to happen now? Because there's other information on the tape, not just the question about the sex, but other things that have been authenticated. Yes, I, I, I don't think there's any question that the operative theory by the chief continues to be the same theory that Beth Holloway has, which is that the boys had non-consensual sex uh, with, uh, with Natalie, and then at the, at the conclusion, she was either comatose and then passed away or she passed away at, at some time in that interval and then they disposed of the body or had someone dispose of the body. That continues to be the uh, foremost operative theory and any evidence that would uh, give us some more pieces to move forward uh, would, be, uh, would be very important to the investigation. I spoke to the chief this morning prior to this interview and he told me again that if there's anything on that tape that really begins to put some other pieces together, he will take it to uh, the Attorney General. Uh, but right now, I have to say, uh, Rita, that honestly, we don't have enough to uh, move forward off of that tape. TJ, if they can somehow get this validated, say the FBI comes forward and says this is what it is and it's in sync with what the Dr. Phil show has said, that is enough at that point, TJ. Don't you think to, to force them to move forward? Yes, I think so. I mean, what else do they need, TJ, in your assessment? Well, I can't really believe that three boys could pull off the perfect crime. There's somebody else involved in here, and I was kind of a little taken when they put Paulus Vandersloot out of the picture. I believe he plays a major part of this investigation, and I believe that he plays a major part of the disappearance and removal of her body wherever she is now. And TJ, let um, me play another part. I had Beth Holloway, um, of course, Natalie's mom, on my show last night, and I asked her because she and I had also talked about some things that she had read, some statements that Yorn and some other boys made about using another boy's father's boat that night. This is something that had never come up before, maybe signaling that someone else was involved. Take a listen to what Beth said on the show last night. This coon's father has a boat, and from what I'd understood, that there was some activity with that boat during the early morning hours of May 30th, when these boys took Natalie. To what extent, we don't know. TJ, you definitely believe that there are others involved, if indeed these boys played a role. I believe that Paulus Vandersloot is the culprit that is directly involved in the removal of Natalie Holloway off that island and I'm trying to place some pieces of the puzzle together to, to solve and convince my theory that that's what has transpired. Steve, what's the next step for you guys? Are you, just, are you waiting for something to come in, or, or are you going to look for something on this no, tape? No, I, I we have to tell you. The, the, you know, we had Arlene Ellis Shippers on the other night. She indicated that these guys may be interrogated again, may be questioned again anyway. Is that the case? I, I think all things are possible, but I'll I tell you exactly what is happening. Uh, one, the Attorney General has asked a another prosecutor from Curacao to come in and review the case from zero to now as a check and balance to the investigation. Dom Pegg has put on another investigator and uh, Adolfo Richardson is returning from Holland next week who will also take up the uh, investigation as well. He's a very highly trained uh, investigator. And I don't disagree with TJ in terms of 
are there other people? We are investigating whether or not there are other people. And I, and I would encourage him to continue his investigation. And if, in fact, he does come up with enough evidence to please bring it to us as soon as he, as soon as he can so that we can run it through our own investigators and see if we can come up with a solution. And Steve is shaking his head yes. All right, both of you, thank you. Steve Cohen and T.J. Ward, thank you both very much. And now an all-points bulletin right here, there has been another